My guest today is Brian Gorman. Brian, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing really well. It's great to have you back on my show. Uh, last time we spoke, you were just about to start a new thing. Correct. Uh, uh, tell me about the thing. Okay. So um, it's called the Microsoft Software and Systems Academy. And ultimately, it's put on by the military team at Microsoft for veterans. And so uh, it's a 17-week boot camp basically so the uh, transitioning veterans who are leaving the military get approval they go through a, a a pretty rigorous selection process with microsoft that they have to go through to get in and uh, get approval from their commanding officers to do that as they're transitioning out for their last 17 weeks or roughly somewhere in their last six months they make this transition they come along and they get to start from the ground up and learn how to program and become a crowd. Uh, <laughs> let me do that one again. They get to program or become a uh, cloud application developer here in the first 17 weeks. You just go through C sharp and then all the things Azure and a little bit of database work, a little bit of other things in there along the way, a lot of data structures, some really cool stuff. That so cool. there's, I didn't, yeah. I didn't even know there was a military team at Microsoft and I, I work for Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, the military affairs guys and girls, um, there's there's a few of them. Um, and they're right there on the Microsoft campus in Redmond. So, well, Seattle, whatever the area in Seattle is. I never remember which was Bellevue or Redmond or I think it's Redmond. But uh, yeah. yeah, so anyway. I don't get they, out there very often. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, me neither. I got to go last year and meet them all. That was fun um, to see them during the MVP summit. So hmm. I took a day and went over there and met with them and just kind of talked through the program and some of the curriculum and stuff. We were having some discussions around like data structures and what was important and different things. So it was a really fun chance to meet them. Um, so there's actually three paths. You don't have to be an application developer. If you don't, if you don't want to be a developer, there's a, there's a path for cloud app, uh, cloud administration. So if you want to do like, this is your networking and, you know, setting up private networks and links between uh, businesses, you know, with uh, VPNs or express route, things like that, that give you connections from on-prem into Azure and mm -hmm. learning how to administer servers for Windows and, and uh, learning how to do all that. So you can start pretty much from the ground up there, learn all the networking, Windows Server Admin, Azure Admin stuff that you would need. Um, I think that culminates with the AZ-104 certification. Um, my program that I'm a part of, or the program that I'm a part of, uh, ends with the AZ-204 certification, more the developer path. But there's also an exciting new path that they've just started as well on cybersecurity. So, hmm. uh, and what's really cool for the veterans is a lot of them already have clearance. So a cybersecurity path is a real good option because they can get some opportunities even within Microsoft on, on uh, things like the red team and um, different things like that have come up. So those, uh, those paths are all available. So really three different options. All of them are 17 week programs. And what's even cooler about it is, uh, you know, I train four days a week. So here it is Friday and I'm not training during the program because they're actually all 15 of my students right now are in a professional development day with Microsoft. So every Friday, instead of training on development or admin or whatever your path is cybersecurity, you get to meet with mentors from Microsoft, so technical engineers who have succeeded in the program in the areas that you're interested in to mentor you, mm -hmm. as well as learn practical skills like how do I interview for a job? How do I write wow. a resume? How do I, what you know? How do I even prepare for an interview? I've never had to interview before. It's you know, sure. yeah. So so it's a really great program. There's one week in the middle, so I actually only train 16 of the 17 weeks. There's one week in the middle, which is an entire week of professional development. So kind of a spring break for me, not for the students. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I can totally relate to this. My, my father was a career military man, uh, 22 years in the U.S. Navy. And, I, and then he retired and went to work for a hospital and became a hospital administrator. So he had two careers. And I remember when I was first starting in my career, I asked him for advice on interviewing. And he said, I have never interviewed for a job in my life. I yeah. only had two jobs. I went to the recruitment office and signed up for the Navy out of high school. And then 22 years later, my friend retired a year ahead of me and just said, come to Detroit. They need a <laughs> hospital administrator. And I showed oh, wow. up and the job was mine. I... <laughs> nice. Uh, 
So uh, he, it, he, right? he had, he, he, the Navy did not teach him. This was decades ago. Did not teach him how to interview, but he didn't need it. The rest right. of us do. The, the world is competitive. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially like we were just talking off camera a little bit about just like the last year being a little bit down and just trying to find ways to get into the tech right now. So, yeah, that seems to be rebound, re, rebounding now, but uh, yeah. yeah, last year was tough with uh, big tech company layoffs. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the, um, you said there was a, a selection process. Not everybody that applies gets into it. Do you know what the criteria is? Um, I'm not a hundred percent familiar with the whole thing, but I will tell you this. Uh, if you follow the Microsoft military team on LinkedIn, they are constantly running webinars and informational sessions on how to get in. Now, this is the even cooler thing. I forgot to mention this. Um, it's not just Central Time or Eastern Time or Pacific Time. They actually have a Pacific region um, for mm. people that are maybe stationed in Japan. Um, they also have a Central European region for like Germany. And I mean, I'm just saying like that time zone there, you know, so you have options if you're overseas right now, mm. like to be able to take that. And actually, I actually have one student right now who is overseas. And so they're just taking it like 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. in the morning. But because um, we're on central time for the cohort I'm a part of. But yeah, so there's multiple options there. But the selection process, I know for a fact that they, they do have to do some LinkedIn learning courses mm. that kind of prepares them for a few things. Obviously, they have to get approval if they're still active duty. Um, I forgot right. to mention that you don't necessarily have to be active duty. I have one student right now who's been out for three years. So if you're honorably discharged, you can still get in. Um, if you're active duty, though, you have a little bit of an advantage because you actually just get that as part of your orders as you're transitioning out. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's considered part of your career while you're still in the military. But, of course, then if you skip class, you're AWOL. So best students I've ever had. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a but, strong incentive. The yeah, brig right. is a strong incentive. <laughs> right. No. So, but ultimately they, um, they, they go through these LinkedIn learning classes and I know at some point, I believe there used to be an exam that was taken through Pearson that they had to pass in order to get in to kind of prove a little mm -hmm. bit of aptitude. And then they have a bunch of interviews, um, that they have to go through to get selected. And then eventually they get notified that they've been selected and then they, you know, they accept the selection and then they're assigned to the cohort. So like right now we're in uh, the, the 13th run overall of the, of the cloud application development um, that I'm on. There may actually be a 14th one going simultaneously. I'm not aware of all of them that happen. Um, and so, you know, you've had like 14, 15, whatever's next, the calls are already out to start submitting your application process because mm -hmm. it is a, it is a something you can't just do overnight. There's a couple of months involved in your in your application. But again, if it if you're listening to this and you're like or watching it and you're like, I this is for me. Like this is speaking to me. Um, I would suggest following the Microsoft military team on LinkedIn. Um, they will definitely be posting. You know when their next informational webinars are, when their next selection processes began, how to submit your applications, and when they're due. Okay, we'll get a link to that in the show notes to to their okay. LinkedIn profile. Um, cool. And tell me a little bit. So you're running of the three paths. You're running the application development path. That's that's Correct. your class. What? Tell me about that. Um, the curriculum and what are you covering in that? Yeah. So, well, let me tell you that. Uh, so you, as you know, we were both at Code Mesh last week, right? So we were oh, at the conference, conference, and that's yeah. And uh, it was really fun. But unfortunately, because I was training for this, not really unfortunately, but unfortunately because I was training for this, um, I actually had to do that like from my hotel room. Um, uh, and so it was, it was, it was a real challenging start to the cohort, but we had a lot of fun. Um, so typically when you start off, it's very intense and it actually kind of feels like drinking from a fire hose for most of them. So the curriculum in general, um, it starts off with just C-sharp programming. So we're just learning how to program. We're learning about things like strings and integers and doubles and Booleans and enums and how can we actually write a console app to use these things and mm -hmm. let me tell you it, it can be a real challenge because you know most of the students have never programmed a computer in their life right mm -hmm. so clearly they went through the selection process and they did do some training so it's not like it's completely green but uh, maybe that was two months ago right and how much do All you right. remember from that so so we had a uh, the first two weeks here just completed yesterday but i'm uh, super excited for where, where my students got to yesterday. We actually are now at the point where we've written a console app that has some menus with some robust like prevention of errors and taking in the data and asking people. And it was kind of funny because I just t I told them, you know, they they need to do something that's more interesting to them because the the technical curriculum that's provided 
has, you know, it has sample programs, but it's not necessarily something they're interested in. So one of the students was like, well, I collect Starbucks cups. So we're hmm. writing a program now that you can enter the details about Starbucks collectible cups. And let me tell you, that's interesting because I never even knew there was such a thing. And uh, oh, so we yeah. like, use that to model hundreds of dollars on eBay to buy these things. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. So we, yeah, so we can, t we can enter the details of this cup. We, we learned about object inheritance. We have a disposable cup and a collectible cup and, you know, different things like that. And, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So after we complete this first unit, then we're actually going to go through some Microsoft Learn units as well. Microsoft Learn has released a number of free trainings in the last few years. Mm -hmm. And one path um, is all about C-sharp programming. So we're going to go through that. And at the end of that, did you know that you can actually get a free C-sharp certification? Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually offered by Free Code Camp. So I'm encouraging my students to complete that part. Uh, that obviously the, the training curriculum that we have doesn't have all of the modules, but they will have the initiative if they so desire to, to know how to complete that on their own, take the exam, sit for it on the weekend or something. It's an 80 question exam and um, it's actually really great. Um, and it's completely free. Uh, free Code Camp and Microsoft are offering that. So we'll do that next. And then we move into the real meat, which is data structures. So, um, That'll be fun because then you talk about all the computer science things and, you know, why we have linked lists and why we have arrays and why we have stacks and why we have queues and which one to use in which scenario so that, you know, ultimately they can make good decisions when they're writing programs. And we follow that up with all the Azure stuff. We get AZ 900, AZ 204. So all of this in 17 weeks um, from the so ground you up. Are, you're deliberately trying to prepare them for, to pass these certification exams. Yeah, um, we're trying to position them so they can, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, not just to pass the exam, to be able to be a cloud application developer mm -hmm. and have success. Obviously, a lot of them will need to start off on the junior level, not all of them. There's a couple on the team already that are definitely really, they're, they're ap, you know, their aptitude is for it, but they've already, already been doing it a little bit. So, but then you've got you know, the other people on the team who their job was like infantrymen or whatever. So yeah. like they, they've not had to think about how, how a computer even works. And so we're talking about, you know, ones and zeros and storing in addresses in memory and it's just a whole new world. So yeah. it's really it's fun new, though. New, new mindset, new way of thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the professional development training. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does the program also offer um, help with the placement, finding places to interview? Yeah, excellent question. So everybody who's in the program gets a guaranteed interview with Microsoft. Now that doesn't mean a job, obviously, um, but it does mean you get an interview. And the first cohort that I ran out of 15 students, eight did get an offer from Microsoft. So really? eight out of 15, uh -huh. um, which was really exciting. Um, I was super proud of them and happy for them. And then even a couple more. So if you don't get Microsoft um, during that professional development, um, sometimes they do like presentations where people will come in and tell you how to write resumes or, you know, be professional, but sometimes they actually have like career fair type of things with mm -hmm. Microsoft partners. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really know if I'm, I, I'll just tell you that a couple of my students, uh, more than a few have gotten placed with Southwest airlines, which is a, a partner of Microsoft. Um, and so like, so it's not just Microsoft jobs, but, um, I will tell you that the last, the second cohort, uh, again, was a little bit down in the numbers of placement and a little bit harder. And I think for the most part, uh, most people are, are doing well now, but it was a little bit longer churn between the time the, the cohort got over to the time everybody had some sort of offer on their plate. But yes, but Microsoft. The, time, the timing of uh, mm -hmm. the job market at uh, the last year, a lot of it apps, big tech it companies. Had. It absolutely was. But I mean, if you think about it, like if I'm an employer and I see number one, that this person has been in the military service for a certain number of years, they got honorably discharged or they have at least, you know, served their time. Um, you know that their trustworthy person is going to show up on time. So they're already kind of a, a, a leg ahead there. Then they right. go through the Microsoft program. Like, you know, that they're getting a quality um, help with that. And you're ready to take on a, an engineer that isn't a senior, right? So this is the hardest part is, you know, clearly most of them come out and what we would call juniors. And I know that the, sure. the term junior and senior is very subjective. Sure. Um, but I'm trying to help them to see like, okay, well, what can I do as a quote unquote junior 
to set myself apart from others. And and so that's part of how I helped try to train them too. Hopefully they get it and uh, hopefully they'll all get jobs and it's super fun when that happens. Yeah, I think the well, the certifications would help that to, to set you apart. The fact that you've gone through the training and the fact that, that you're, you've built an application to track Starbucks cups. That's just, <laughs> just the fact you have something real to show that, apply, yeah. that applied knowledge, you know, in, in lieu of having, you know, professional work experience, here's something cool that I built on my own. I think that's, yeah. that's a huge plus. Yeah. So that's, that's an awesome point you made because I do get them on GitHub right away. Um, start explaining, you know, don't show all your code, obviously, but there, this will be like your professional pro- portfolio. Yeah. And the last couple of cohorts, we've actually teamed up, made three teams and did, did different MVC projects that we could actually have a public facing website you could show and the code yeah. backed it, you know, so that's an excellent point. Uh, sounds like fun. Are you having fun? Oh man, I am now. Uh, the first <laughs> couple of weeks were, uh, it, it's a lot harder when you first start out. Um, but I knew, and, um, I talked with Matt Elin about this cause he was a tech trainer for a long time too. And yep, he, he's been know. on the show. Yeah. Okay. And so we, we have some, some, some stories from the trenches. Right. And just, I talked <laughs> with him last week just to kind of ask like, well, what were some other strategies? Because everything I was trying felt like it was missing the mark to be honest. And so like, as a trainer, my job is not to just, you know, wrote, wrote, go through the material, but it's to make sure that my students are, are finding a groove. And I mm-hmm. am pretty sure we found it yesterday. Um, I had one student put a big old light bulb in the team's channel and I'm like, I love seeing that. That <laughs> oh, made yeah. me happy. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. That's hard. It's hard to communicate virtually yes, like it is, it is in person. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and it is virtual. It's all virtual ed training. So it's not in the classroom. So they have to be very strict about paying attention because, you know, they're at their house and they've got dogs to walk and babies to feed. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, but how did you get involved in this? So the company that I used to work for before I went out on my own um, is called Opsgility, and they're a partner with Microsoft. And sure. so they, yeah, they get a bunch of our uh, hackathons. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, um, I actually subcontract through Opsgility to do this. Um, and then Opsgility has the cohorts that they're managing. There's a lot of, there's a lot more things that go into managing the cohort than just being the trainer, right? Like they have to make sure all the all the scalable labs are available for like the training stuff. Um, mm. They have some additional challenges they run. And I know that there's other global partners other than Opsgility that are doing cohorts as well. So it's not just them, but that's how I got in was um, because when I was working there, then that was the thing um, that was kind of getting getting rolling and getting rolling. And then, um, yeah, so the opportunity just came up for me to subcontract as teaching that. And I, of course, jumped on it, found out the first time I did it that it's probably, I, I think I can confidently say it's the most rewarding work I've ever done. As awesome. A, and, and especially as a trainer, but even like I've done some pretty cool stuff as a developer, making people's lives nicer or helping, you know, somebody get a business off the ground. But watching a military person who has served their country and done so much for you go through this transition of what am I going to do with my life from maybe, you know, and I'm not saying they all have very low salaries, but most of them have salaries that are less than you make as a developer. Um, Some have, depending on how long they've been in there, some of them have some pretty nice salaries, but most of them don't. Mm -hmm. So you watch really good benefits though. Right. This is true. This is true. Right. So yeah. So that, and that there is, there is that. Um, but watching them go from like, you know, um, you know, a, a normal like pay range for, for a military person into a developer salary and, and seeing that transition that, that can have the effect on their, on their family and on their life, um, being a part of that, being part of their journey, just kind of, it fills you with a sense of joy, like to see yeah. someone else succeeding so much. And so that's fun. You're helping them become better versions of themselves, and yeah. you're making a, and you're making a living doing that. That, that, that could be better <laughs> than that. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, yeah, it's a very awesome opportunity to be a part of that, and just to see all that happen. But it, I, you know, I want to make sure that like it's very clear that I'm just a part of the journey. It's really on them to make it all happen. Got it. No, I get it. You're, yeah. you're enabling. You're, the, you're the, the catalyst. You're just the, that's yeah. their work, but you're the one that's that's uh, that's helping them be right. <laughs> Helping them help themselves. Hopefully they, th- yeah, hopefully most of them are like, yeah, he helped me. It didn't hurt me. <laughs> Good. Uh, this is really cool. Is there anything that we haven't talked about on this topic that you think is really important? Um, that's a really good question. I feel like we 
covered most of the stuff. The other thing, again, just to make sure that, like, if this is something you're interested in, make sure you get go out to the Microsoft Software and Skills Academy site, read through the details, get follow that military team um, at Microsoft on LinkedIn so you can see when your next opportunities would be. Um, and then I would say if, it, if it's at all something you're considering, you definitely should not just ignore this opportunity because it's a it is it can be a life changing opportunity and you know a course altering thing especially if you're uh, transitioning out of the military or you have been out for a while and not really sure what your place is in the world right yet because um, the team will help you also with things like the transition like understanding what it's like to be a civilian versus a military person and I I make the joke with my students but they've all confirmed this is 100 percent true that. The hardest part for them is going to be the fact that nobody shows up for meetings on time because oh, yeah, so that's a Microsoft of, thing. <laughs> well, none of us, uh, even <laughs> it's not just Microsoft, it's everybody, right? Cause we're just, we're not used to being told to have to be in a place by 7 AM after having 10 minutes to shower, shave and put our uniform in a specific way. Right. We, yeah. we show up when we show up and they're, um, Things, little things like that could be really frustrating to someone who's... Sure, you're not used to... Not everybody has the discipline that yeah. uh, a military man has. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I just looked up... Uh, it looks like uh, military.microsoft.com slash MSSA is the site, but I'll put that link in the show notes as well. Awesome. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. This is really in interesting, and I think it's a great thing that you're doing. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's a great opportunity. I'm super excited to be part of it, and I hope I'll get to do a few more in the future. So, right, thanks. Hey, uh, I, I told my friends that I have a joke about construction technology. Uh, the problem is I'm still working on it. <laughs>